في رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد كانت آياتي تتلى عليكم فكنتم على أعقابكم تنكصون مستكبرين به سامرا تهجرون وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم نعمتان مغبون فيها كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected brothers, friends and elders The scholars and the ulama have written that a believer observes two types of fast one is the common fast and as we enter into the final days of Ramadan, may Allah accept it from us all. And may Allah give us the ability to exert ourselves to optimum. Someone in a marathon in the final lap, he doesn't become sluggish, but rather he intensifies. It just gets more and more. And that is precisely the teachings of our Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the time in which we exert ourselves to optimum and we maximize and exploit the great days and nights that lie ahead of us. So one is the fast that is observed in the month of Ramadan, and is, which ends with iftar and culminates with Eid. It ends with iftar and culminates with Eid. And there is the other fast, which is a metaphorical fast, and that is from the time of puberty and ends at death and culminates with entry into Jannah. If you look at both these fasts, the fast from dawn to dusk, or the fast from puberty to death, the common thread between them both is a life of discipline. That is the life of a believer, a life of discipline. And trust me, my young brother, I have met so many reverts who came into Islam because they were tired with the life of freedom. Because in the apparent life of freedom is destruction. And in the apparent restriction of Islam is true freedom. <coughs> in the previous Ummah, Allah speaks about a tale that the people of that time were challenged by a tyrant, by a dictator, by an autocrat, by the name of Jalut. So they asked the Nabi of that time that Allah must appoint for us a leader. Someone by whom we could rally and mobilize and he could steer and navigate us to salvation and guidance. So Allah then appointed from amongst them a man by the name of Talud. Inna Allah qad ba'atha lakum Talud malika. Inna Allah qad ba'atha lakum Talud malika. Allah has appointed Talud as a king. They had reservation, apprehension, skepticism. They were not convinced. No, he lacks it. He doesn't have anything. And Allah said, no, he has knowledge, he has skill, and he has an impressive appearance. Finally, they agree. And also, I must mention something here. As a proof of his leadership, and as a proof of the fact that he was nominated by Allah, the, the trunk in which were the relics of the Prophet Moses and his brother Harun, which the Bani Israel had lost, was returned to them. So they used to keep this box, this trunk, and in that were some relics of Sayyidina Musa salam, and by virtue of that they used to gain victory but it had disappeared and Allah will return this and this will affirm and confirm and authenticate the leadership of the man Talud. They rally, they get together and they move it. They're excited, they're enthusiastic. Remember my opening comments, the secret and the formula to happiness in this world and Akhirah is a life of discipline. Islam is a very practical and pragmatic religion. It doesn't deny you, it only regulates you. It doesn't tell you don't get married. 
It doesn't tell you don't eat. It doesn't tell you don't sleep. It says do everything. But there's limits, there's boundaries, there's moderation. I read an article written by a, a professor in London in which they say that happiness can be as easy as a snooze. A snooze a day and you'll be happy. And they're actually calling it not happiness, nappiness. I have the caption of the article. <laughs> nappiness. Nappiness. A survey proves that people who sleep for less than 30 minutes at midday, siesta, less than half an hour, are more happy, are more productive, are more proactive, have more gumption, have more clout in them than those who don't sleep. But that we can identify and we resonate with that. But this is something that would put your thinking cap on. Those who sleep for more than 30 minutes are more sluggish than those who don't sleep at all. In other words, it's counterproductive and it has an adverse effect on you when you don't sleep with moderation. If you sleep for 30 minutes, you'll be up, you'll be focused, you'll be diligent, you'll, you'll, you'll achieve. But as soon as you sleep for more than 30 minutes, it's now counterproductive. You get up lame and lazy and tired and it has no drive. The Prophet said, Al-Utasu min Allah wa tathaubu min shaytan Yawning is from the devil while sneezing is from Allah. He وسلم, sneezed in his life but never yawned in his entire life. Allah. He وسلم, never yawned in his entire life. This is categoric, it's documented, it's recorded, it's not a thumbs up. Because yawning is from the devil. And yawning brings laziness in you. On the lighter side, they said, what's the definition of a yawn? The only time a married man gets to open his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what's the definition of a yawn? The only time a married man gets to open his mouth. So the boy is like, mom, when will I be of age that I don't have to report back to you and I don't have to update you? And she's like, listen, my son, back off. Even your dad hasn't reached that age. <laughs> so anyway, they come, they walk in with Talut, who's the leader. Our deen is beautiful, my brother. Our deen is beautiful. I was talking to my wife earlier today and she's telling me how's the long British fast. And I said, I promise you I'm hungry, but I cannot describe how close I feel to my Allah. I cannot, and you can cry and I can cry. It's just a different feeling altogether, right? This hunger, this thirst, the lips are parched, but you feel that bond with your creator. How do you say I fly often and you're sitting in the plane and you roll the shutter and you see the sun tipping on the western horizon and probably you're the only one in the cabin and you break that fast, but your inner heart is screaming with jubilation that you don't know how to express. Can this be fake? Can this be untrue? Can this be fabricated? Islam is a beautiful, perfect, wholesome, user-friendly, pragmatic religion. We need to discipline ourselves and fit into the system of Islam. And that's the recipe of guidance. And if we want to temper with the deen and we want to adjust the deen, and that's the recipe of destruction. And if you start tempering with the truth and adjusting the truth, because sometimes, you know, we think loud. I'm just like, what if Ramadan was only two weeks? I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just like thinking, you know what I mean? I'm just like, what if? We never think, what if it was two months? Right? We never think that way. But we, we, we keep on thinking the other way. May Allah grant us discipline. Amen. Discipline is the life of a human. Discipline. A believer is measured, he's calculated, he's methodical. He has a plan of action. He's not one with a fidget spinner, man. <laughs> The sign that Allah has turned his gaze of mercy away from an individual is that individual's perpetual indulgence in things that are in vain and useless. You don't need a second opinion that Allah hasn't put his eye of mercy on that person. I'm not saying that we must not have 
recreation. Don't, don't, don't misconstrue me because today the things can be taken out of context. There is place in Islam for constructive re uh, 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 recreation. Islam recognizes that. Islam affords that. But it's measured. It's in a context. It, 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 it relaxes you and refreshes you so that you can bounce back and you can be strong and come back. You relax yourself. The Prophet of the noble companions, Muhammad ibn Sirin, كان إذا اشتد الضحى when it was forenoon, midday, ينزل على سوق البصرة. He would come to the marketplace in Basra. And then he would يمازحهم. He would talk to people, have a little uh, chuckle with them, have a little banter and humor. ومن أجل ذلك اجتمعوه. People would come and this was the catalyst that drew people towards his gathering the most. So just to give people in the day a little bit of humor, a little bit of banter, a little bit of laughter. That's the teachings of Islam. Islam is, there's a whole chapter, Babu Maja'afi Mizahi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what I'm saying is extended, non-productive activities. And today we're dealing with a, a society and youth in particular, and Allah guide one and all, who can spend hours. I mean, YouTube, and this is documented, witnesses 100 billion hours of viewing daily. 100, I was listening, staggering, and I'm driving and I'm like, have I heard this right? On the talk show radio program, 100 billion hours of viewing daily. And you could just sit and kill time and move on. Anyway, let me come back to what I was saying, talking of discipline, and I want to digress into the aspect of time discipline. Time discipline. So they come and they move with Talud, and they come by a river. So Talud then tells the people through uh, the medium of the Nabi of that time, Inna Allaha mubatalikum binahar faman shariba minhu falaysa minni. Listen, Allah is going to test you. We're going to cross a river. We all are going to be thirsty, but Allah wants you to restrain. Allah wants you to manage. Allah wants you to discipline. And Allah just loves this here. Allah loves this here. When you can discipline yourself, and you can hold yourself and you can manage yourself. You can hold your reins and just apply brakes, ABS, and say, listen, no, this is a no, no. I mean, study the greats and study those who achieved and accomplished spiritually and worldly. It was strong willpower. Nobody achieved anything without great willpower and resolution where you could commit yourself, put your mind to it, and that's it. When things get tough, the tough get going. And so they come to the river and he says, listen, Allah is going to test you. You drink from it, you're not part of me. And if you don't drink from it, you're part of me. Yeah, there is a concession. If you put little in your palm and you just sub that up, that's fine. So much is a leeway. Now they come right there, they're thirsty, they look at the water. No, man, talud, no, really, man. No, 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 no. We cannot be crossing water and we're thirsty and we don't drink it. So they start consuming water in large volumes. With the exception of few. But look at the irony of what happened. Those who consumed large volumes, and this is mentioned in the footnotes of Tafsir Uthmani. Those who consumed large volumes of water, believe it or not, their thirst was aggravated. And those who drank in measure, their thirst was quenched. That's not all. That's the material immediate. The other spin and benefit of that were those who drank in measure, they remained committed to the cause. And they said, no, we're behind you and we've mobilized and we're going to go and we're going to challenge the tyrant of the time. And those who drank in large volume, their thirst was aggravated and they backed off and they're like, no, we're slow and we're sluggish and you know what? We cannot come and it doesn't make sense and we are weak and that's a superpower. And the whole plot was lost. When the Sahaba were in Hudaybiyah, and we know what a test Hudaybiyah was, right? They were denied Umrah, they were in the state of Ihram, and then the rumor was circulated for the assassination of Uthman, عنه, which was a chapter of its own. <coughs> and then the peace treaty was drawn up, and in that there was great amount of prejudice display. <laughs> When they displayed this prejudice of disbelief, and the Prophet wrote, this is a document between Muhammad, it's in Bukhari Sharif, first volume, Kitab al-Shurut. 
محمد ابن عبد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من غريما هذا ما قضى عليه محمد رسول الله this is an agreement between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, لو نعلم, if we knew you are the Prophet of Allah, ما صددناك عن البيت we wouldn't have denied you access to the Kaaba so please, you're going to omit this title that you're a Prophet and you're going to write Muhammad the son of Abdullah and you're not going to write a fancy title that you're a Prophet because that's the very contention so this was a separate provocation and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, told the Sahaba delete it, I remain the Prophet of Allah even if they deny it and then the ulama write that Allah compensated for their omission of the name of the Prophet from the document that Allah revealed Surah Muhammad and in that Allah said Muhammadur Rasulullah walladheena ma'ahu ashiddahu ala al-kufa so Allah revealed the name of the Prophet with great detail in the Quran listen they won't remain the document won't remain but Quran will remain Quran will remain and Muhammad Sallallahu name was then mentioned in great detail. Allah didn't just say Muhammad, Allah said Muhammadur Rasulullah. So there were multiple issues. But coupled with all of that in the state of Ihram, Allah tested their level of discipline. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu layabluwannakum allahu bishayim min as-saydi tanaluhu aydikum تَنَالُهُ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَرِمَاحُكُمْ لِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَافُهُ بِالْغَيْبِ Or you who believe Allah is going to examine your levels of restraint, your levels of discipline. You say, no, I'm on a diet for two weeks. The only thing I lost is 14 days. And then myself and my wife said, in the weekend we're cheating. So she came home with the burger, I came home with the secretary. <laughs> Forgive me, brothers. There's no discipline. I mean, how's the irony? You get to the gym and they argue for the parking very closest to the gym. But didn't you come here to walk? I mean, where's the logic? You came to the gym and they're arguing for the first parking bay, but, but this is the one place you don't have an issue to park close by because it's a gym. You come in here to, you know what I mean? Burn calories. Hang out, where's the logic? So the only thing I lost is, what? I gave up giving up. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Really, Ramadan is there to create within us discipline, my brothers, discipline. We gotta become disciplined humans. The world is desperate for humans in that form. Allah Marumi says a person came with a torch walking around in midday and he's shining it. So people are listening when the sun is out and the solar panels and it's all bright. What's it? He said, no, I'm looking for humans. <laughs> so what do you see? No, these are all slaves of the egos. These are slaves of the egos. <laughs> what they see with the ego? Drop the E and you'll go. Drop the E and you'll go. Come out of that. Liberate yourself from the shackles of succumbing to that ego. It's not a life. It's not a life. You're going to succumb to that evil and you'll be a slave to that completely. And you crush that ego and you will liberate yourself and you will realize this, this wholesome life. Wallah, there is a fake pleasure in roaming your gaze. It's irrefutable. But there is a spiritual ecstasy in dropping your gaze. There is a spiritual ecstasy in dropping your gaze. There is a fake pleasure in hoarding wealth. And what does he do with his wealth? That just gathers and accumulates, gathers and accumulates. Every time going on his app. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Just checking updates, you know. Debits came through, debits came through. Payments came. The Quran says, his whole day is gathering, counting, gathering, amassing, calculating, just looking at it, every little one. Listen, you checked it half an hour ago. Nothing drastic is going to happen, my brother. It's the same amount. If that's your balance, that's your balance. Does he foolishly think that the more he amasses, the longer he lives? He's dreaming. He'll be hurled into the crusher, the crusher 
وما ادراك ما الحطم do you have any clue what this crusher is not allah it's a fire ignited by allah may allah protect us i was just reading the tragedy in 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 uh, london and our hearts go out to all the victims may allah make it easy to everyone may allah grant ease and rescue and deliverance but can you imagine the chaos the chaos and the inhalation and the screaming and the desperation and the occupant of hell will scream out and scream in jahannam and he will only try to get the attention of malik malik can you just look here can you just look here ya malik ya malik liyaqdi alayna rabbuk can you ask your allah to just give us death we, we we don't want paradise can you just ask him to just end our life and nothing happening okay malik malik we've got a change of plan here can you ask your lord to just get us out of here for a breather just for a gap for a gap, right? I'm, I'm giving you Quran just so we can breathe and refresh and get our act together and throw us back in. And then 40 years, there's no reply. And after that, the reply is such, it's better he doesn't reply. Remain there, don't dare open your mouth. Allah. A foolish man, how can there be pleasure in any indulgence which follows with health? We do, how can there be excitement in anything which follows? So they get there, Allah tests the Sahaba, and Allah brings the game so close to them. Now, if you're into hunting, you know what, you're stalking, you're on your fours, you're trying to get the animal, you need it to be a clear view, the range got to be right, the cannabis got to be correct, it mustn't be obscured, it mustn't be pregnant, there mustn't be a baby there. You're looking at multiple factors. And then here, Allah says, I'm going to test you such that while you're in the state of Ihram and it's forbidden for you in the state of Ihram. And forbidden for you is hunting on the land in the state of Ihram. Just respect the garb that you've put on and you don't hunt any animal. And Allah said, when you're in the state of Ihram, I'm going to bring the game so close to you. You won't have to pursue it. You can almost touch it with your hand, but it's forbidden because I love seeing how you can discipline yourself. <laughs> And now you sit down in a flight and it's a long haul. And lo and behold, there's a very beautiful young sister sitting next to you. And you wish the flight never ends. <laughs> right? And Allah just loves discipline, my brother. Allah loves discipline. And I promise you, it's a life of discipline. I just said to someone, we're all searching for happiness, right? We're all looking desperately. Come in Abdin Yarju al Bashar, Fatabdu Lahul Khazara. Come in Abdin Yarju al Ata, Fatabdu Lahul Bala. You're waiting. Everybody wants just to hear something, you know, miraculous. You, you, this happened. You, you, you've excelled. You've achieved. Something really good happened. You're just waiting, man, you know? Probably Pakistani supporters are also quite excited. <laughs> anyway, so you, you have all this excitement in you. You have all this excitement in you. But the life that's happening is very different. The life that's happening. And let's just take Ramadan. Little discipline from dawn to dusk. And there is a sense of joy every day at Iftar. <laughs> every day we all are happy. Ask yourself in any other month, are you happy to sit down on the table 30 days? And you realize what's the key to happiness? Discipline. Every single day you look forward to Iftar, right? And, 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 and what somebody said, we live in a strange world where the poor walk kilometers to buy food, to get food, and the rich walk kilometers to digest the food they ate. We live in a strange world. The poor walk kilometers, right? I've been to Africa, we've been to many places, giving out hampers, and you see it with your own eyes, right? It's, it's crisis. I was now in Jordan, we were serving out some food to some refugees that are there, and the mother comes out in this particular camp, and we're giving out this little hamper, and with her comes out her son with a prosthetic right hand and an artificial left leg. I'm just like, Sherrod, like, my Allah, what do I say to this woman? What do I say to her, my Allah? And I just, my brain froze. 
And she comes and she receives it and the son, and then she's asking, listen, you know what? His right hand is growing and the prosthetic plastic thing is now shrinking. So if you brothers can so graciously facilitate a doctor who could just, you know what, adjust this, or can we get a, an artificial limb that would accommodate the growth of his hand as he's growing. And the left leg is artificial and the right hand is prosthetic. And my child is, you know what, no, no, I don't have a good hotspot here, and I don't have a good Wi-Fi here, and I don't have this here. And, and, yeah, Allah, what's happening and where is that? So we live in a very, very strange world. So Allah tested the Sahaba, and they delivered, and they achieved. So anyway, I want to speak basically on this year, that just as we've disciplined ourselves somewhat, somewhat, we cannot claim, because the kind of fast we submit to Allah, I cry to my Allah every day, that Allah, I don't, I'm, I'm giving you a lame and a sick and a weak fast, Allah. This is a very feeble, this is not a full optimum ideal fast, my Allah. And how can I, how can I impress my Allah by abstaining from food when he never eats? And how can I abs ab impress him with my abstinence from drinks when he never drinks? And how can I impress him with my abstinence from my spouse when he doesn't have a spouse and he doesn't need a spouse you take help from three people you take help from someone senior to you a child from a parent you take help from someone equal to you a spouse from a spouse a partner from a partner you take help from someone junior to you a parent from a child Allah negates all three here and all praise belongs to Allah. He doesn't have children. And he doesn't have a partner in his kingdom. And he doesn't have a guardian out of weakness. So when he is like this, then say Allahu Akbar. Fakabbirhu takbira. Fakabbirhu takbira. Then say Allahu Akbar. Say Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar. <clears throat> so we need to bring discipline in our life for time. <coughs> a believer has a structured timetable. Imam Shafi'i, the great jurist, whom Allah had endowed and favored with so many things, and he had written extensively. Uh, he says at the age of 10, I had memorized more than 10,000 couplets of the Banu Hudayl tribe. And then also I just stopped it because actually poetry is not too good for scholars. So I stopped at 10,000. If it wasn't, uh, you know, bad or it wasn't, uh, you know, anything wrong, then I would even excel the poet Labid. وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ And we didn't teach our Nabi Sassam poetry, and really poetry doesn't gel with the profile of a prophet. Poetry. So the Prophet Sallallahu was not one who would create rhythm in his words. There were certain things which would intrinsically come out of his blessed lips. But we're not calculated in poetic form. But yes, poetry was intrinsic to the, to the Arab. So anyway, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, I spent many years with great luminaries and legends and, and, and saints. And I can summarize all my years of sitting with the great in two words. I can summarize it. Sahibtu Sufiya, falam antafi' minhum illa bi kalimatain. If I want to narrow down all my experiences, it's two things. Al waqtu sayfun, qata'tahu aw qata'at. Time is a sword. Either you exploit it or it exploits you. Either you cut it or it cuts you. Either you achieve through it or it destroys you. They say our days, this is an English proverb, our days are like identical suitcases. The same size. It's just some people can pack more in it than others. You know, your trunk is full and the other guy comes, wait, wait, man, you don't know how to pack. And you want to take two bags and the other guys, wait, you need to be smart. Let me repack for you. The bag is the same size, but some are packing in it much more. You read in the footnotes of Jalalain, Jalaluddin Mahalli. He says, I compiled 
the tafsir of 15 juz of the Quran in the duration Musa went to meet his Allah 40 days. 40 days he compiled the tafsir of the Quran. We don't read it in 40 days. Right? How they made of their time, how their time was constructive. And number two, your nafs and your ego. Either you dictate to yourself, I'm going to be reading the Quran, or then your ego will dictate to you that you'll be perusing porn. There's no in-between phase. Either I'm going to say, I am reading Quran, or I am doing something constructive, or then your ego will dictate to you, one of the two. You know, the ulama have written, the nature of the ego is like a horse. When you sit on a horse and if you ride a horse, then as soon as you get on the back of a horse, a horse examines the confidence of its rider. So when you get back on the back of a horse, a horse will try you. A horse will jostle, a horse will move, a horse will not oblige and comply, a horse could rebel. But if you hold the reins firm and you show grip and might and authority and you assert yourself, then that horse will move on your gesture so much that even Allah swears oats on that horse. Allah swears, all these are oats on the horses. The horse that takes you on your back and penetrates in the middle of the battle. The horse that causes the, 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 the dust to, 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 to come up in the air. The horse that moves so swiftly and confidently. So when you hold it, then it can show you so much strength. But if you show weakness, then you're a dummy on the back of that horse and the horse is riding you. Then you're a dummy. You, to the world you're riding, but that horse is riding you. And really, my brother, this is this ego. Either you will dictate to it how long I will sleep and when I will sleep, how long I will eat and when I will eat, how long I will stand in prayer or else it will dictate to you. And then when it dictates to you, then it destroys you in totality. That is the nature of the ego. So this is my learning experience. Imam Shafi said, either you engage your ego, you tell him this is what it's going to do, or then it engages you. The ego by nature. Look, look at the modesty of a Nabi, and I read this in the writings of Hakim al-Ummah. That uh, nobody has a testimony or a clean slate like Yusuf alayhi salam, right? The minister's wife tried to seduce him towards zina and wrong, and she invited him. And Allah protected him in such a way, one is if a child is running to the fire, you pull the child away. And a greater level of protection is you divert the flames. So that's a greater level of protection. So the child keeps on running, you move the flames. Allah said from Yusuf, that we diverted evil away from Yusuf, right? That's the first testimony to the greatness of Yusuf alayhi salam. Then the woman herself in question, she herself admits and concedes guilt. No, no, let the truth come out clean and clear. It was my, my seduction and Yusuf was clean. Then the woman in the neighborhood, all the women said, so we cannot blemish this man in any way. You think all the women in Bradford can say this is a good man? Your own wife at home won't start over there. <laughs> Leave the woman in the neighborhood. Leave the woman in the... That's a stretch. That's asking. That's a tall order. That's a big ask. Imagine the entire woman of Egypt said, no, this is such a man. We can never find him roaming his gaze. Wow. That's a rich man. That's a wealthy man. That's an accolade. That's a feather to your cap. You've got something to your credit, my brother. That is rich. That is wealth. That you have modesty and discipline in your, in your behavior. They say many who are candy to your eyes are poison to your soul. Study their ingredients before you feed them to your gaze. Allah. Many who are candy to your eyes, you Dazzle your gaze. You dazzle your gaze and like, wow. You dazzle your gaze. They candy to your eyes, but they poison to your soul. 
Study their ingredients before you feed them to your soul. May Allah grant us restraining. May Allah grant us discipline. And the one who can only fear the day he'll be interviewed by his Lord. That my Allah is going to interview me. My Allah is going to interview me. So all the women of Egypt said Yusuf is spies. So the testimony of Allah, the testimony of the very woman who seduced, the woman of the neighborhood, the devil's testimony. Allah said, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ Yusuf is amongst the selected servant. The devil said, لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Allah must lead all your servants, but your selected ones I will not interfere with. Notwithstanding all these testimonies, Yusuf didn't come out proud and arrogant. Well, you heard. Well, now you know. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ I'm not trumpeting myself. I'm not exonerating myself. I'm not claiming piety. The ego by its very nature is highly provocative towards sin. That is how the human ego is. And remember the scholars have written, the urge of evil is not evil. To succumb to the urge is evil. So you, you, you cannot say, you know what, hey, I want to reach a level of piety that inshallah, regardless of whoever provokes me, I won't get angry. No, that's not human. Imam Shafi said, if you provoke and you don't become angry, you're not a human, you're a mule. Man is tughdiba falam yagdab fahuwa himar. Man is tughdiba falam yagdab fahuwa himar. I want to reach a point that, you know what, I can be, I can be seduced and tempted and I don't feel any movement, I don't feel any... No, 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 no. That, that is making you non-human. A person asks someone for advice, he said, don't become angry. He said, Alhamdulillah, I never become angry. It's just people make me angry. <laughs> I never become angry. He said, okay, let me rephrase my advice. When you become angry, look after this flesh and look after your hands. So, Hassan Basri rahmatullah said regarding Sahaba, وَلَقَدْ أَدْرَكْتُ أَقْوَامًا I found the Sahaba to be a group of people who were more particular and possessive over their time than their wealth. Money, they were casual, but they were easy. You know what? Let it go. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. But time, sorry, my brother. You encroaching, you infringing, you overstepping. You, that's my time. Sorry, sorry. This is my time. Where are we when it comes to them? I recited a verse of the Quran of the 18 Jews of Surah Mu'minun. So Allah speaks about three evil traits of the infidels of Mecca. <laughs> Indeed, my verses were recited to you and you would turn on your heels, averting my verses, turning away. Then Allah highlights three evils. Number one, you were arrogant with it. Academically, linguistically, the word bihi is a dhamir which refers to something previous. The scholars of tafsir say, there's no mention of a marja in the context of this ayah. Nothing has featured before to which it follows, but by and large, the overwhelming view of the scholars of tafsir is the reference here is the Kaaba because of the close proximity and the association the infidels had with the Kaaba. So it was a given. You say, oh, you, with, you were with him again. No, but, but who's him? Well, well, who doesn't know who's him when it comes to you? It's a known, it's a given, it's an obvious. When you are so close to someone, you just make reference implicit and not explicit because people know who the two are. So the first ill of the people of Mecca at that time was, they were proud and haughty over the services rendered to the Kaaba. May Allah grant us humility. Imagine they were, they, they were serving the Kaaba and they were proud. We might be serving one musalla and we think, you know what, it's, it's a haram in its own capacity. This was their weakness, pride and arrogance over what they did. Imam Ghazali's words I quote very often, because it gives me a shiver in my back. He said, don't ever be proud. Don't ever be arrogant. When you look at a child, then you must say to yourself, lam wa ana fala shakka minni. 
This is a child. He hasn't reached the age of puberty. So he's not accountable. So he sins. He hasn't committed a sin. So undoubtedly, he is better in the eyes of Allah than I am. When you look at an adult, an elderly person, someone older than you, you say, Hada qabli, fala shakka annahu khayrun minni. This man was born way before me. So he's fasting before I was born. How can I even dare compare myself to him? Undoubtedly, he's better than me. And when you see a scholar, you say, or this man is carrying the Quran in his bosom. He has the prophetic teachings. Allah has endowed him with, how can I even dare compare myself to him? And when you see an ignorant person, a sinful person, a man who lacks knowledge, you say, This man disobeyed Allah because he doesn't know better. Right, he doesn't know, he's not educated, he's not learned. Me, I know it and yet Allah, and I'm disobeying Allah. أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةً Have you not seen that man who's made his God his deity? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, just as deities, objects and isms were worshipped throughout the ages, people also worship their egos. وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ And Allah caused his deviation despite his knowledge. وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا Oh Muhammad Sallallahu tell them the tale of Bal'am ibn Ba'ura. Tell them the tale of this man who had the knowledge of Allah in the ism A'zam. But he gave up that knowledge. Fan salakha minha. Salakha in Arabic literally means to remove the skin of an animal. As salkhu, remove the skin to come out. Naslakhu minhu nahar. Fan salakha minha. He came out of that knowledge. Fatba'ahu shaytan. The devil pursued him. Fakana min al ghawin. He became amongst the deviant. Walau shi'na la rafa'nahu biha. And if we so wanted, we could have. We could have elevated him. But he inclined to mundane things, material things. And he followed his base desires. So we debased him and disgraced him. And he became like a dog with his tongue dangling low down, running around. Whether he was running or breathing or walking. You know, I've been harping on this in many of my talks, and I have one talk, yes, I'll say to you also. This, this is something personally happens to me, and I said it in many countries, and I'll say it to you, my brother. A brother came to me the other day, he said, you know, Shaykh, I've been listening to your talks, and you make me feel guilty that I haven't understood the message of the Quran. I said, good, that's the guilt I want to create in you. I want to leave you to be restless so that it stimulates you to action. Otherwise, you'll spend today regretting yesterday and you'll spend tomorrow regretting today. And that is how life will end. You'll spend today regretting yesterday and you'll spend tomorrow. They say the devil has no problems with our good intentions as long as it's for tomorrow. When you say I'll change tomorrow huh? and the day after the devil. But when you say I'm changing now, that is the time the devil has an issue. So we all have a thousand issues in our days, right? And we come clogged up for prayer. Children are rebelling, this crisis in the economy, you know what, a check has bounced, you're trying to meet payments, there's issues at home. This, this, we live in turbulent lives, we live in turbulent lives. And we want desperate answers. And then you come for prayer, and lo and behold, this happens to me a thousand times. And the Imam selects a passage of the Quran to recite, and Allah is answering every emotion of your day in every rak'at of what has been recited. Now, who do you blame if you don't take the time and the trouble to understand the message? You come for prayer, Allah answers your question, but you don't take the time to understand the message. You want to speak to Allah, perform prayer. You want Allah to speak to you, read the Quran. And He speaks to you. And you know what's the beauty of the Quran, my brother? It's revealed for one situation but it can fit a thousand scenarios like it was revealed for every situation independently. That's Quran. 
Wallahi al-Azim, that is Quran. It's revealed for one, but it will fit a thousand scenarios till Qiyamah as if it was revealed exclusively for that individual. I just share with you one example. Allah speaks about people who love to be praised for things they didn't do. Right? It's bad enough to seek recognition for good you did. Imagine when you seek it for things you didn't do. And there's no shortage of them in the world. <laughs> now, if you know Arabic, and they just screaming out for recognition for things they haven't achieved. Allah speaks about the munafiqeen. And just apply this verse today in the world on a micro and a macro, domestic and international, local and abroad. The, the trait of the munafiqeen wa وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ Oh man, I will die not being able to convey to my audience the message of Allah. It's something I cannot. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, إِنِّي لَآتِي عَلَى الْآيَةِ فَأَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ النَّاسِ جَمِيعًا عَلِمُوا مِثْلَ الَّذِي أَعْلَمْ I come to a verse, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu I get so immersed in the sciences of the Quran, my heart screams out. I wish the whole world can leave what they're doing and come and join me and understand this verse like how I'm understanding it. I don't have any knowledge and my heart screams like that. Imagine what Abdullah ibn Abbas heart was. I don't have knowledge. And what an insult to ever claim that we've understood the Quran. It's wara'ul wara. It's beyond my comprehension. It's beyond your comprehension. But Allah paints and sketches the image of the munafiq. And I'm just saying the universal nature of the Quran, how it can fit everything. And you know, this, I, I cannot tell you how much it happens to me. And I come and, and whatever passage is recited. And I'm like, okay, my Lord, I got the answer, my Allah. And then the Imam, and it's not coincidence. And then he stands up in the second rakat and he reads another verse. And Allah gives me the message again. And like, listen, It was a tough day and it was a bad day. And it was a challenging day. And the first verse the Imam recites, you will most certainly be tested in your health and your wealth and your children. Oh my Lord, I got it, my Lord, I got it. I got it. I got it. And then I'm having an issue with my kids and, 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 and they, they're in adolescence and they, they grappling and I'm grappling and it's back and forward. And then the Imam is reading and he comes, he comes in prayer and this happens and Allah answers. قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرَا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Listen my youngsters, I know you fabricated this and I know it's a white lie. Yaqub is telling his sons, you are lying to me. But my job is now just to be quiet and be patient and not to question my Allah. Allah. And I'm like here for prayer and I'm having, you know, grief with my kids and I come. Now if you don't take the time to understand, who do you blame? Who do you blame? Then we want our youth just yesterday, three days ago, a student phoned me and he said, Shaykh, please speak about suicide. Our youth have become suicidal. Our youth have become suicidal, suicidal. Right? They've become suicidal because we're insulating them so much. We're protecting them so much. We're shaping a monster for tomorrow. Like one scholar said, it's so beautiful when a child is small and sweet. You say, wow, he's so lovable and he's so adorable. I feel like eating him up. And then when he grows up, you say like, I don't know why I didn't eat him. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't eat him. Because like, you know what, he's evolved to a monster, man. Right? Is evolved to a monster. The hadith of Bukhari, Bainama Rajulun Yamshi. The Prophet said a young man was walking. He was just feeling inflated about himself, conceited about himself, he was feeling cool about himself. And he was all combed up, he was all dressed. And the hadith of Bukhari. And Allah didn't like the arrogance. And Allah just told the earth to split and swallow him and close the chapter. That's it. You know, you see some of these youngsters by their car. They're almost like saying, وَلَا تَمَسُّوهَا بِسُوءٍ فَيَأْخُذَكُمْ عَذَابٌ قَرِيبٌ وَلَا تَمَسُّوهَا بِسُوءٍ فَيَأْخُذَكُمْ عَذَابٌ قَرِيبٌ That is what Salih alayhi salam said to his people. Don't interfere with this camel. You'll be gripped by punishment. Some youngsters body language with that car. Don't touch it with an evil hand. You'll be gripped. You'll be seized. So this was the first weakness of these people, that they had pride over what they did. May Allah grant us humility, my brother. May Allah grant us. One person said, I believe everybody is better than me. 
Why? Because you're a human and I'm a human. I assume you sin and I know I sin. لِأَنِّي عَلَى نَفْسِي مِنْ يَقِينٍ وَعَلَى النَّاسِ مِنْ شَكِّ You're a fallible mortal. Like I always say, we mustn't, we, 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 we mustn't think negative of people, but at the same time, we mustn't think angelic of people also. We mustn't elevate them to angels. So precaution must take its course. Precaution must take its course. We're not accusing, but there must be precaution. The Prophet Sallallahu is in the journey of Hajj. He's at Mina. Fadl ibn Abbas is mounted uh, uh, behind him, a radif. And then a woman from the Khath'am tribe comes to ask a question. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi turns the head of Fadl. Lawa unuq al Fadl. And he said, Fadl, look that way. And Abbas radiallahu said, Lawayta unuq al Fadl. Oh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you turned the head of Fadl that way. He said, Ra'aytu shabban wa shabbatan. I seen a young man and I seen a young woman. And I couldn't believe that the devil was not going to ignite something. So I said, let precaution take its course. <coughs> so that was the first evil. My time is running out here. Right. So uh, the first thing, mustakbirina bihi. The second is samiran. Samiran, samara in Arabic literally means a moonlit night. It was customary amongst the Arabs that on a moonlit night they would sit outside and they would just sit and talk and pass time. So Allah condemned this here. Look at the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. If the youth of this ummah can hold on to one principle, I promise the destiny of this ummah will be different. He said no sleeping prior to Isha, no social discussions post Isha. Yeah, the night is young. The night is young. It just begins. Relax. Right. It all happens. And then in the morning, alayka laylun tawil farqud. The devil says, relax, sleep, lay, sleep. And the Prophet said, he gets up, kaslan, slow, sluggish. He's not productive in the working environment. He's not productive at home. He's got no drive in life. What a society today. What a generation that's out. My kids always tell me, he says, Dad, when we go for holiday also, you become restless and you need to give a talk somewhere. I'm like, it's not that. It's just that probably the, the way we were raised, you know what? Even, and that's what I always say, when you look at the lives of our pious, I'm nothing, our pious predecessors, they exploited recreational time and they made it spiritual. They flavored their recreation with spirituality. Sadly, today, we dilute our spirituality with recreation. I hope you understood what I said. Our pious predecessors, they exploited their, spir their recreational time. It was family time, but you could interject it with some spirituality. We dilute, pollute, contaminate. Uh, you're going for Hajj, you're on the journey of Hajj. You're playing games in a plane. Really, man, I, I see high flyers, corporate, and sitting and play games. I know there's a child in every adult, but it looks like there's few in you. <laughs> it like really beats me. I fly often and I say there's three things I do when I'm flying. We all sleep from time to time. We all read. And I love making to how I fly. I just love it. It's so nice to talk to my Allah. It's so lovely to talk to my Allah. It's extended time. It's just you and your creator. What's there to be shy about? Raise your hands. You are bound in that seat. You cannot go. Just talk and chat and talk. Amir ibn, uh, the, the, the student of Abu Musa, Ash'ari radiallahu used to say, Allahumma innaka khalaqtani bi amrik wa aqamtani fi balaya hadihi dunya bi mashi'atik thumma qulta li istamsik walakin kayfa astamsik illam tumsikni bi lutfika ya qawiyu ya ameen. Allah, you created me because you decreed that Allah. And then you surrounded me with temptations because that's how you designed life. And then there were so many things around me and you told me to restrain and not to surrender and succumb. I'm just asking you, if you're not going to help me, how am I going to achieve this? If you're not going to help me, Allah, Allah, I'm a human. Huh? This youngster came to me and says, Sheikh, you know, I'm flammable by nature. And that girl is throwing sparks at me. <laughs> so I'm like, relax, brother, relax, relax. This is no sheikh, but you know, I just like, you know, relax. 
So Allah, you've put this instinct in me, you put this desire in me, this temptation around me. Allah, if you're not going to hold me, if you're not going to hold me, how am I going to talk with Allah, my brother? Talk, talk with Allah. So they would sit and gossip, and this would destroy their time. Just social discussions. Put an end to it, my brothers. Put an end to it. After Isha prayer, Ramadan is disciplined, but the challenge is after Ramadan. The challenge is after Ramadan. This late night, this meeting out, I was in Sydney for a program, right? And then we went out to, for, for dinner, post the event. And then as we came out from that event, and Allah is my witness, I had heard about this, but I didn't see it. So it was a late night and we were, all the shuyukh were coming out. And we passed by this, uh, uh, you know, Shisha Cafe. And it was all these Muslim young Arabs, youngsters were sitting there, or Muslims. And they were sitting, and Allah be my witness, it pierced my heart and it made me cry. The pain hasn't left me today. I almost wanted to go there, but obviously it wasn't within my jurisdiction and my right, and I was infringing and encroaching. But my heart cried, Allah, this is our youth. These are our boys. This is our ummah. Where, where, where is the time going, my Allah? Where is the time going? It can be so much more productive. So a believer, la samurata ba'd al isha and the third thing that the pagan Arab used to do, tahjurud. When they used to sit and talk, then they used to blurt nonsense. I mean, you look at the average language of a youngster. It's obscene, it's vulgar. So many youngsters cannot speak clean language. I don't know where was I, was I in London or was I somewhere? So this youngster will be driving and he's got the sat nav on and he says, Chef, can I show you something? I'm like, yeah, go for it, brother. He says, do you know this thing has a female voice? Yeah, I said, yeah, I know. You know when possible, make a U-turn. When possible, make a U-turn. So I was with my wife and a friend and we're driving. And this woman on the set never said, when possible, make a U-turn, reroutine, reroutine. So he nudges me, he says, I really love this woman. <laughs> oh man, my wife, your wife at the bed, you got guts. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I'm just like, you know, there's this murmur and there's extended silence. And then I said, so what's it? He says, when I make a mistake, she reroutes me politely. <laughs> <laughs> she reroutes me very, very politely. <laughs> and if I look back and the woman folk have a chuckle, I said, good luck, anyway. <laughs> so this youngster tells me, he says, Sheikh, come and tell you something. So he owns it, and I didn't know this, and I'm saying, Ya Allah, where is the world going to? And then there is a youngster speaking. <laughs> and he's like, hey, mate. And there's some F's and B's in between. Take a right. And it's like, like, a, like a provocative language. It's like, like you know what, just ch charging you up and daring you and inciting you. It's like, you know what, turn right, keep left, half left, half right. No, this is vulgar, obscene. You know, it's evil. It's, it's just rough language. And I'm like, yeah, Allah, has the world stooped so low that even devices have vulgarity in it? Even devices have vulgarity in it? And the Quran says, don't even use vulgar or bad language on the gods of any person who worship other than Allah. وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ كَذَلِكَ And you know what? The Father Ulama, you can hear this, is mentioned in the tafsir. Allah is speaking to the Prophet اِتَّبِعْ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكْ لا إله إلا هو وأعرض عن المشركين ولو شاء الله ما أشركوا وما جعلناك عليهم حفيظا وما أنت عليهم بوكيل ولا تسب الذين الله is using a مخاطب a واحد مذكر الله is speaking to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم اتبع أعرض and then when it comes to vulgar Allah switches to plural and the علماء say why has Allah switched because the نبي of Allah never used vulgar so that injunction doesn't apply to him that is not for the Nabi, that's for everyone else. Don't use vulgarity. Lam yakun Rasulullah Guard your lips when a child is near, for children repeat the things they hear. Let no ugly tone be heard, no careless talk, no angry word. For it is a gracious sin to mar the innocent. Language, vulgar or unkind, leaves its mark upon the mind. So let your speech be wise and mild in the presence of a child. My time is running out and I urge you, my brother, what I wanted to say was much more, but the time is against me. So I don't want to exceed my time limit. But the thing is, we need discipline in our life. We need discipline in our life. These were the three evil traits that were found. I mentioned, I mentioned one incident. What's the time? 
No, but what time are we wrapping up? Two, three plus. Okay, inshallah. So I just share with you one incident and I'll conclude. Saeed bin Amir radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Umar had appointed him as the governor of Hims. Hims was a notorious place. It was known as al kuwaifa to Sughra, the second Kufa. Kufa had a bad reputation. Whoever came there, you know what, the local people opposed the governor. So it, it had a bad reputation. But he said, Saeed ibn Amir is the man with the necessary profile and the credentials, and he will, he will stand the test of time. It wasn't long they lodged a complaint against Saeed ibn Amir radiallahu Umar radiallahu anhu immediately goes, and that was Umar radiallahu anhu. The likes of Saad ibn Abi Waqqas, who were amongst the Ashra Mubashra, and the local people lodged a complaint, and he was dismissed. He was dismissed, right? The, the politics of that time was clean and clear. It was pure and wholesome. Nobody was above the book. Everybody had to answer. There was transparency across the board. So he gathers the people and he says, what are your complaints? He said, the first complaint about him is, La yujibu ahadan He's the governor. If we have an issue at night, he never responds. So Sayyidina Umar called him up and he said, listen, I've appointed you. There are subjects, there are people, they have issues and grievances. Why don't you reply? He said, ja'altu nahara lahum wa ja'altu layla lillah. No, well, you know, I have a timetable and there's a, there's a strict time. The day belongs to the creation, the night belongs to Allah. So this is how my night is set. This night is with my creator and that time belongs to my Allah. So I'm afraid I cannot compromise on my time with Allah. That is my time with my Allah. That is my time with my Allah. If we miss one day at the gym, we quit to make it up the next day. If we miss two days in reading Quran, Allah knows my intentions were good. <laughs> Allah knows my intentions were good. Right? You can ask the ulama, you'll be rewarded on your intention. Uh, then we have a thousand ways to justify and appease ourselves and create our own perceptions of spirituality. Right? That's the, that's the sad reality of it. جعلت النهار لهم وجعلت الليل قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه. You if you hear this dialogue of محبت, this مكالمة of محبت. Oh my Habib, stand up in the night, speak to me for half a night, or make it a little more. Okay, if you want to sleep, make it less. Okay, see if you can increase. Oh man, this is a dialogue of محبت. قم الليل إلا قليلا نِصْفَهُ أَوْ إِنْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا أَوْ زِدْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَدْتِ لِلْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا And take pride and just read along. إِنَّا سَنُلْقِي عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا We're going to put this colossal task of revelation on you. إِنَّ نَاشِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ وَطْأً وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Verily the stain awake by night. Ashaddu is very effective. Wata'a in crushing. It crushes the ego. It annihilates the ego. It destroys the ego. Wa aqwa muqila. And the utterances are more aligned and focused because there's, there's the serene ambience. There's this peaceful atmosphere. So you talk and you chat and you converse and you communicate with your Allah. Ja'altu nahara lahum wa ja'altu layla lillah. Okay, the second thing is, la yakhruj hatta yata'ala nahar. He doesn't come out till the day has progressed. It's late, midday, and even later. We need to speak to him early morning. He's not available. Well, the truth is, there is no helper at home, being the governor. So I assist my wife with the domestic chores. I assist my wife with the domestic chores. Where's our act together? Where's our muhabba and affection at home? Where's our time together between husband and wife? Where's that bonding? I spend my night. This is the life of a believer. It's in a strict timetable. Allah didn't say get up in the morning and offer five prayer. Inna salata ala al kitaban mawquta. Allah fixed prayer with time. Allah fixed prayer with time, which is a loud message to regulate you. Allah didn't tie our, our rules with the solar system, but Allah connected it with the lunar calendar. Allah is in charge of the Gregorian calendar and the lunar system and the solar system. But our laws, yes, they ask you about the months, about the moon, Hilal. Tell them they must calculate their days, whether it's Hajj, whether it is Eid, whether it is Ramadan with the moon. What's the wisdom? What's the subtle wisdom of connecting our rules with the lunar system? It's not on a fixed time. You're going to have winter fast. You're going to have summer fast. You're going to have Hajj in this season, Hajj in that season. And that's a believer. He is governed by Allah. He never gets comfortable in a position because it's ever changing. 
It's ever changing. And that's what Allah wants. That I'm a servant, I'm a servant, and that's the discipline. Otherwise, if it's based on the Gregorian, on the solar system, and Allah is in charge of this earth. The sun cannot surpass the moon, the moon cannot surpass the sun. Every planet is floating in its orbit, and that's a verbatim translation, right? If you do astronomy and you'll understand it, in its in its orbit, yes, it is it is it is swimming away, it's floating away. But that's the beauty. So in the morning, I spend time with my spouse. The third thing is, one day in a month, he doesn't come out. And why is it? Oh, Omar, I only have one piece of cloth, what I own. So I got to wash it once a month. My brother, you go in your cupboard, and I go in my cupboard, and I cry. I, I, I say this about Uwais Qarni, and I read this in the writings of Ibn Asakir. It's in the ninth volume. There's a write-up there on Uwais Qarni. Once I gave a talk, so I did some research on it. And every evening, when the sun used to set, then whatever surplus bread he had of food, he used to give it in charity. And then he used to say, Allahumma mamma tajoo'an fala tu'akhidni bihi. Allah, whoever died today across the globe out of hunger, my empathy and my sympathies with him. But I just have a request, Allah, don't take me to task. I gave my last piece of bread in charity. Allah. And then he would give his last piece of cloth, surplus in charity. And he would say, Allahumma mamma tajoo'an. Allah, whoever died out of lack of food or shelter. We were now in Jordan and we gave homes with donations of brothers. And I did a recording there for some radio stations and everything. And you know what, brothers? There was a family of four living in a tent in the desert, in a place called Mafraq, completely enveloped in sand and dust. And then they asked me to hand over this containerized village. And it was so emotional. And then they come in and we sit the family down and the man is crying and he's praying for the donor. And I asked him in Arabic, what's your biggest excitement? He said, my biggest joy is that now I'm in a place where there'll be no snakes and scorpions to attack my little 12 month old baby. And this is not like a developed house. It's just that it's somewhat of a semi solid structure, not solid in the sense solid. And so I only own this year. And, and, and Uwais Qadni used to say, Allah, don't hold me responsible. I don't have anything else. You go in your closet, I go in my closet, my brother. Where am I going to face my Lord? It's inevitable. You got to face your Allah, I got to face my Allah. I'm not coming with you, you're not coming with me. How am I going to answer to my Allah? There's shoes for every occasion, there's jackets for every occasion. There's no more place in the cupboard, in the closet. This doesn't match with this and that doesn't blend with that. And yalla, there are people who are not breaking even to have things adequately on their body. So this is how I spend my day. When Sayyidina Umar heard this, he said, I'm happy that these are the reasons. I have no doubt he will remain the governor. I'll leave you with this quotation. Muawiyah bin Khudayj came to Medina. He was reporting on some expedition in which the Muslims were participating. He got into Medina, it was midday. He said, now this is not a good time to meet Omar. Omar might be sleeping. Uh, Omar's servant heard and she, he got wind of it. So he called out to him that, listen, come in the right to Omar. <coughs> Omar is in much anxiety and is anxious to know about the updates. And the person comes running. <coughs> and then Omar said to him, but why didn't you come straight? I'm waiting. When you came to Medina, why didn't you come and report to me immediately? He said, I thought it's midday, it's time for sleep, so you'll be rested. And Umar gave an answer, my brother, and it gives me a shiver in my back. He said, لَإِن نِمْتُ النَّهَارِ ضَيَّعْتُ نَفْسِي وَلَإِن نِمْتُ ضَيَّعْتُ الرَّعِيَّةِ وَلَإِن نِمْتُ اللَّيْلِ ضَيَّعْتُ نَفْسِي فَكَيْفَ النَّوْمْ بَيْنَ هَذَيْنِ He said, if I sleep at night, then when will I speak to my Allah? And if I sleep in the day, then when will I discharge the obligation to the creation? With these two daunting responsibilities, you find me the time and I'll put my head on the pillow. If I sleep at night, when will I talk with my Allah? And if I sleep in the day, then when will I be the leader of the Ummah? We ask Allah to grant us discipline. We ask Allah to give us the ability to, to maximize of these days. We ask Allah to make us amongst those people who will be from the utaqa min al-nar. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. O most kind, most loving, most gracious, most merciful Allah. The being who is just waiting for an excuse to pardon Allah. 
Allah, these hundreds that have gathered and assembled, it's been a long day, it's been a hard day, it's been a tiring day, Allah. Allah, our bellies are empty, Allah. Our lips are parched, our throats are choking, Allah. Tears are trickling down, Allah. But we're happy on your command, and we love your deen, and we love your commands, Allah. Allah, we know you're going to forgive us, Allah. Whoever has gathered here, Allah, you know their needs better than I can express it. Rabbana inna kata'lamu ma nukhfi wa ma nu'alim. Rabbana inna kata'lamu ma nukhfi wa ma nu'alim. Allah, you know what we reveal and what we conceal, Allah. Allah, you fulfill the desire of every brother and sister, whatever desires they have in their heart, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, we ask you to make us amongst those people whose liberation and emancipation and deliverance from hell will be declared in these blessed nights, O oh Allah. Allah, we ask you to grant ease and goodness and protection and afia to the ummah across the globe, Allah. Allah, we ask you to grant us discipline in our lives, Allah. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَتَاتِ amri. As the Prophet asked protection from his matters not being organized, Allah. And that was more to teach us, Allah. Grant us discipline, grant us system, grant us order, Allah. Grant us, make us methodical, Allah. Grant us a, a disciplined cycle in which we, 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 we spend our time, O oh Allah. Let, let our nights be conversing with you, Allah. Let our days be in your worship, O oh Allah. Make us amongst those who indulge in the world in what you've provided us to the extent that will keep us healthy and active, O oh Allah, and we don't make it the be all and the end all, O oh Allah. Those of our youth that have strayed, my Allah, and those of our youth that are walking in the clubs and the pubs, and those of our youth that are dining with haram sisters, Allah, we ask you, O oh Allah, jerk them, but don't hurt them, Allah. Jerk them, but don't hurt them, Allah. Jolt them, but don't hurt them, Allah. Bring them home safe and sound. Those that have drug addiction, those that have alcohol addiction, those that have porn addiction, those that have any sin addiction, my kind, loving, caring, merciful Allah, we ask you, be ismik al adam through your supreme name via which you don't reject prayers, Allah. We ask you, Allah, to grant them deliverance, free them from the shackles of sin, O oh Allah. Allah, create in our hearts the love of your obedience, my Allah. Let us not die till we taste that one prolonged sajda where our forelock is just riveted to the ground, Allah. Where we are just stuck to the ground and we just enjoying the sweetness of prostration, O oh Allah. Some have prostate cancer and the ummah has today prostration cancer, Allah. You grant us the love and the sweetness of prostration, Allah. Allah, those children that have rebelled against their parents, let them return home safe and bring joy to those parents, Allah. Those amongst us that our parents are alive, make us dutiful and obedient to them, Allah. Allah, grant our parents a befitting reward, Allah. Grant them goodness, envelop them in your mercy, Allah. Those who have moved on, Allah, let goodness descend on their souls. Allahumma anzil ala quburihim al-diyaa wa nur وَالْفُسْحَةَ وَالسُّرُورِ وَجَازِهِمْ بِالْإِحْسَانِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِالسَّيِّئَاتِ عَفْوًا وَغُفْرَانًا O oh Allah, make us good Muslims, make us good humans, make us good nationals, make us good citizens to fellow non-Muslims and fellow citizens, Allah. Allah, let peace reign on the earth, Allah. Allah, you stop the aggression and the tyranny and the oppression and the killing and the massacre and the mayhem and the anarchy, Allah. And let peace and normality and stability reign. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka min hu'abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين